So welcome student, we'll move ahead with the second problem in the consolidation of soil. The statement goes as follows. At the reclamation site for which the soil strata as shown in the figure, a 3 meter thick layer of a fill material is to be laid instantaneously on the top of the surface. So the figure uh, is shown in the next page. So if the uh, coefficient of the volume compressibility that is MV for the clay is 2.20 10 to minus 4 meter square per kilo newton then the consolidation settlement of the clay layer due to the placement of fill material will be and the options were given it as 69.5 139 228 and uh, 278 mm so they have asked us about to calculate uh, consolidation settlement or the ultimate consolidation settlement that the soil will experiencing so this data is uh, given as follows the initially the fill material was not present but initial strata was up to the silty sand and uh, the clay layer and to the bottom it's a uh, impervious layer or the rock through drainage is not at all uh, permissible and for this particular strata they have placed this particular field which of which is of the thickness equal to three meter instantaneously which means uh, within no time or within very less amount of the time they have constructed this particular field and they have asked us about to calculate the settlement of the clay because of the placement of the fill. So initially remember the fill was not present. So uh, because of the construction of this particular fill material the clay layer is going to compress because this particular fill material will be spread over a large entire area which creates the, uh, the stresses over that particular area uniformly. So this was the stress which is created because of the placement of the field and this particular stress value you can easily calculate because you know the bulk density of the fill material just you need to multiply by the thickness so you will get this particular additional effective stress that is being imposed on the top of the uh, surface and since the area is very very uh, large so therefore I assume that the same stresses that's what we are imposing the same stresses will be transferring it into a clay because what happens because we have got the this particular distance 4 meter and this particular thickness of the clay which is very very high equals to 10 meter what happens if you just place the small load like a footing or the strip foundation or a rock foundation that particular load is concentrated over a very small area since the load is concentrated on very very small area the load will be distributed as you go deeper into ground and since because of the distribution of the load the stresses into a clay will be less because you have imposing suppose 25 kPa of the stress here because of the placement of the footing or the raft this 25 kPa while you go down this 25 will getting reduced will reduce up to value maybe equal to 20 or 15 something like that and that particular uh, the distribution of the stress we will be seeing in detail in this distribution of the stresses chapter but remember this distribution of the stresses has got a very very important role to play in this particular consolidation settlement and also we will see uh, the problems based on this particular area but Remember for this problem, this particular field is being placed over a large area which occupies very very large area and because of the large area, the stresses that what we are imposing on a clay will become uniform. So there won't be any kind of variation in the stress as you go down in within a clay layer. But remember, if you have got the variation of the stresses because of the placement of the field or maybe because of the placement of the structure maybe an embankment maybe a slope any kind of the structure if there is a variation then you need to take the average stresses at the middle of the clay layer and that too in that case you need to divide this particular compressible layer into a number of equal parts so that your calculation accuracy will get increased so we will see such kinds of problem in, uh, in due course of time but for time being since it is given it as the field was placed in a very very large area because it's a land recrimination project so the increase in stresses because of this placement of, uh, placement of the field will be 21 into 3 which is nothing but 63 kpa kpa means kilo newton per meter square 
because it's kilonewton per m cube you need to just multiply by the depth then you will get the stresses that that is being imposed on this particular area because of the placement of the field for the land recombination project so this is the additional area we are imposing on the clay layer so because of this placement of this uh, particular uh, effective stress because of the placement of this field then what happens there will be a change in the volume of the clay because of the escape of the pore water and that lead to the consolidation settlement and the last thing is about for us is the evaluation of the ultimate consolidation settlement of the clay layer because of this fill material and the given data was only about pertaining to the coefficient of the volume compressibility is nothing but for the mv so the mv value which is the coefficient of So that value particularly is given it as 2.2 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter square per kilometer. We have given with this particular value of the MV and we have asked about to calculate the delta H or I will call it as a primary consolidation settlement they have asked. But uh, as such we need to collect a lot of formulation uh, in order to calculate this particular change in the thickness or the uh, or the consolidation settlement which is occurring because of the escape of the pore water in the soil mass so if you recollect our previous uh, phase diagrams we have got with the only soil solids and the water in the initial part this is before placement of the field but after once you place the field the volume of the soil solid will not change because it's they are incompressible but the water will tend to move out of the soil volume so this is the delta h or i call it as this is the delta v and since uh, the area under consideration is same delta v divided by v will become equal to delta h divided by h and uh, also you know that the void ratio which is nothing but the ratio of vo volume of void to the volume of soil solid and also if you add one to both side you will get v divided by vs and uh, remember i consider it as the to be an initial word ratio e naught then uh, for for at any stage e will be equal to the volume of voids because that's that is the thing which is going to change divided by vs and for the vs i'll place it as v divided by 1 plus e naught for the for the just vs i have placed this particular factor right so therefore if i just place the value of uh, vv that is going to change over a period of the time because of the placement of the fill uh, v uh, so so i need to bring over here the change because this value v will not going to uh, affect uh, much uh, no, no, this particular value is not going to affect much because it's the initial value 1 plus e naught therefore uh, if i just take a change over a period of the time so delta e becomes equal to delta vv by initial volume v so therefore delta vv by v will become equal to delta e divided by 1 plus e naught and that's very simple but here the change in the void ratio is not given even the initial void ratio is not given only the given thing was pertaining to the coefficient of volume compressibility now also now we have to use our, our definition of the previous terminology such as the coefficient of just the compressibility remember mv is not equal to av and from that particular derivation of the coefficient of consolidation we have seen that m mv is equal to av divided by 1 plus e naught and we have defined this particular term during the during uh, the derivation of the cv for the terzaghi's one dimension consolidation theory and uh, and also we know the av is the slope of the ep curve just the ep curve so if you get this particular slope value this is av but if it is the e versus log p curve or log sigma curve any way you can call then this will become equal to straight line for normally consolidated soil then you will get the compression index equal to cc remember compression index for 
the curve in between E versus log P and that will be a straight line for normally consolidated soils. For over consolidated soils, it will be like this. E P curve, E versus log P curve, sorry. It will become like this for over consolidated soils. For over consolidated slope is still less than that of the normally consolidated because this, this slope is for the working compression part of the uh, soil because the first time they are experiencing this particular part that means the somewhere here would be the pre-consolidation stress sigma c dash and the stresses will be far less than the the stresses at which the soil is originally consolidated that is the pre-consolidation stress so these are the existing stresses so let's suppose so then the soil will become more consolidated obviously so our matter our concern is to find out the this particular relationship between the av and the mv we know the relationship between sorry a v and mv we need to find out the relation between delta e and av so av will be equal to delta e divided by delta p right so uh, just with the negative sign because as e is decreasing p is increasing so therefore negative sign anyways the negative sign doesn't matter in this case so uh, your you need to place this particular delta e by delta p in this particular expression here you need to place the value of av which is nothing but the delta e by delta p and you will get the expression as delta e by delta p into a plus e naught into mv so this up to this it's fine so therefore then thereafter i have bring the delta p value to this end so that becomes delta e by 1 plus e naught equals to mv into delta p so the delta e by 1 plus e naught as you know it is nothing but the delta h by h so therefore the delta h by h becomes equal to the mv into delta p so the h that is that is nothing but the thickness of the clay layer is known to you which is nothing but the 10 meters so this is h which is 10 meter the thickness of the compressible layer here it is clay so therefore uh, you need to place it over here so you'll get the consolidation settlement primary consolidation equals to the h 10 meter into mv value mv value is 2.2 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter square per kilo newton hence it's okay this value is in meter square per kilo newton this is in meter and into the delta p delta p has to be in kilo newton per meter square then and then this unit will get cancelled and you will get left out with the unit equal to meter so the uh, delta p which is because of the construction of the film material as a line decolumination project is nothing but the 623 kpa so you need to multiply it just by the value equal to 623 uh, therefore you will get the consolidation settlement as delta h equals to the 10 into 2.2 into 63 so you will get it as uh, 1386 into 10 raised to minus 4 meters so uh, into you are right into 10 raised to minus 4 meter you will get so in order to convert it in the millimeter you need to multiply by 10 raised to 3 so you'll get the consolidation settlement equals to delta h equals to 138.6 millimeter because if you multiply by 10 raised to 3 you will left out with, with, with only the 10 raised to minus 1 so it becomes 138.6 millimeter and uh, if you check out with the options that, be, that has been given with you for this particular problem is uh, for I think yeah you'll get the B option as the correct uh, as per this problem and options are concerned so it's 139 so this finishes the second problem we'll move ahead with the uh, next problem thank you